Hey everyone, welcome back to the series on Firebase security rules for Cloud Firestore. Last time, I talked about matching documents in Cloud Firestore using wildcards in order to control access to them with conditions you specify. There's still more to know about matching documents, and in particular, how to use a special kind of wildcard, which I will call a glob wildcard. At the end of the last video, I left you with this rule right here, the default rules when you create your database in test mode. Notice the wildcard in curly braces with the document equals star star. This glob wildcard is actually matching all of the documents in the entire database, and the allow expression is granting full read and write access to everyone. This is handy for new projects where you're experimenting with Firestore, but you definitely do not want to publish your app with this rule in place for obvious reasons. In the last video, I recommended that you remove the default rule entirely before you begin writing any other rule. That's because of this one very important property of security rules. If a document is granted access by any rule, that access can't be revoked by any other rule. For example, say you want to add in the rule from last time that controls access to documents in a collection called users. Adding this new rule makes absolutely no change to the way the entire rule set works. All documents are still given full read and write access by the rule with the glob that matches everything. That's why it's important to get rid of it entirely. In fact, I suggest incorporating security rules into your app as soon as possible and keep them up to date with the client code that's affected by those rules. Not having good rules can be a costly mistake and can be exploited by those who would like to see or delete all your data. Okay, back to matching documents. Unlike normal wildcards that only match one path segment at a time, glob wildcards can match multiple path segments. That's why this rule matches all documents in the database, both top-level collections and those organized in subcollections. Here's another rule that uses a glob wildcard at the end of a path match using a collection called users. This rule not only matches all the documents in the users collection, but also all documents in all of its subcollections, and it gives everyone read access to that entire set. This can save you some typing if you want to apply the same rules to all the documents, avoiding the need to call out each subcollection in its own individual rule. When this rule evaluates for a document, there will be a variable called document in the rule which contains a path type object that it contains all the path segments of that document matched by the wildcard. I'll talk more about path objects in another video, but you should know that this data is available with glob wildcards. So if I execute this query on the users collection, the value of the document variable contains a path with one segment, which is the string sparky. And if I execute this other query against a subcollection organized under users called history, the value of the document path variable becomes the path you see here. Note that it contains all of the path segments of the document after users. The values of these glob matched strings are not typically too useful in security rules unless you're going to do something advanced with them, such as checking the path segments with a regular expression. I'll talk about that in a future video. The one thing you do need to know is that glob wildcards match at least one or more path segments. So if you change the rule to look like this, which now includes a UID wildcard before the glob wildcard, it would still match requests for documents in subcollections. Notice that the glob wildcard no longer includes Sparky's UID, which is in its own UID variable now. But for queries that only look at a document in the user's collection, like this one, the same rule would not match that document because the glob wildcard must match at least one path segment, which is not present here. So if you want to write a rule that applies to all documents in a collection and all of its subcollections and capture the UID of the user document, you would have to split it up into two matches, one with the glob and one without. But there is something super important that you need to know about the way glob wildcards work, and that's the fact that they've changed behavior in version two of Firebase security rules. I'll break it down. By default, if you don't specify a rules version, they will use version one behavior, which I just mentioned. It requires that globs must match one or more path segments, and they are only effective at the end of a match path. But if you change the rules to version two, globs will match zero or more path segments, and you can now use them at the beginning of a match. Why this change of behavior? Well, that's to support the new collection group queries in Cloud Firestore, and I'll show you that in a bit. But first, let's see how you specify version two in your rule set. All you have to do is add a single line at the very top of your rules like this, and now you get the new glob behavior. I recommend always starting out your rules with this new behavior so you won't have any surprises if you end up using collection group queries at some point. Okay, 
Let's go back to the last rule I showed before on the users collection. Remember that this query didn't match with rules version 1 because the glob wildcard required at least one path segment, which wasn't present in the query. But if I update the rules version to 2, both the UID wildcard and the document glob wildcard will get values. This document glob now matches zero path segments. This lets you write a single rule that applies to all documents under users in all of its subcollections. Since we now always have a value for UID, we can use it in the new rule, and it applies to both of the queries shown. Here's the rule saying that everyone can read everything under the user's collection and all its subcollections, but only the user making the request can write any of their own documents. Now let's take a look at how security rules work with collection group queries. A normal query in Cloud Firestore considers only documents in a single collection that's uniquely identified in the query. But a collection group query is a special kind of query that considers all of the collections and subcollections of the exact same name, no matter how deeply nested they are. In my prior examples, it was implied that Sparky had a subcollection called History, and maybe its documents contain action he's taken in an app, such as click and swipe. Well, each user is obviously going to have their own history as well, each with their own history subcollection. Here's Switch, my D&D alter ego, obviously a rogue. What a collection group query allows me to do is query across all of the subcollections named history, no matter where they're organized. So this query here is going to try to fetch all four documents across everyone's history subcollections. Now let's just say, ignoring all the prior rules I've shown so far, I want to write a new rule that says only click type actions can be queried in this way. So this query should only return one document from the data shown here. The first part of the solution here is to write a rule that applies to each of the subcollections named history. Since this collection group query is always going to consider all documents with this name, it's going to require the rules version 2 glob wildcard behavior. The document match has to look like this. Notice that we have the glob wildcard called prefix at the front of the path this time, and a normal wildcard ID at the end, with the history path segment in the middle. This lets the rule apply to any document in any collection named history. For collection group queries, the glob wildcard must absolutely be at the beginning of the path here, because this rule has to match all possible collections called history. Now, to check that the document must contain an activity field with the value click, I'll use the resource variable to indicate that I only want documents satisfying that requirement. If you're not fully familiar with everything resource does, I'll cover that in a future video. OK, the rule looks good to me, but there's still one problem here. As you know, the collection group query is effectively asking for all documents in all subcollections named history. But the rule only allows certain documents to be read. The rule will make this query fail every single time, even if all possible documents happen to match. This might be surprising to you at first until you realize that security rules are not filters. You can't write a rule that limits the results of a query from what's being requested. The rule knows internally that the query is asking for more than what's allowed, so it simply rejects the query without any more consideration. Not a single document is read or returned, and the query fails on the client. The solution here is to make sure the query is in sync with the rules. Since the rules say that only queries where an activity string is click can be satisfied, we can add a filter to the query to match the rules, and now everything is good. Of course, this is the JavaScript syntax for the filter, and other languages will look different. I hope by now you have a pretty good understanding about how both normal and glob wildcards work when matching documents in your Cloud Firestore rules. But there's still a lot to learn about security rules, especially the expression language you can write for your conditions. Next time, I'm going to talk about the different sort of permissions you have available in your rules. Turns out, there are more options than just the read and write permissions that you've seen so far in this series. So be sure to join me right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube to learn more when the next video is ready. And I'll see you then.